Hi, Dr. Dara here. Perhaps one of the most common questions that I get is help me to better understand the medical treatment of tinnitus. Okay, but in order to answer this question, we have to take a step back. See, we have to understand tinnitus. We have to start with why, right? Why do people have it? How do they live with it? And what can be done about it? So first, let's start off with a, with a definition, okay? How do we define tinnitus or tinnitus? You see, the definition is pretty simple. A phantom sound heard in either the ears or somewhere up in the brain. But let's stop right there before we go any further. See, a phantom sound. I love that definition. Why? Because the use of the word phantom is intentionally analogous to phantom limb. Now, with phantom limb, it's typically described as a perception or sensation, some sort of a pain, right, in a missing extremity. See, in both of these, phantom limb, phantom sounds, most often, see, it occurs when there's a disruption of the neural signals from the peripheral system up to the central system, or from ear to brain, okay? So now let's get back to tinnitus. When we think about the cause of tinnitus, whether it be the buzzing, the hissing, the swishing, the swooshing, whatever the sound may be, the sounds that patients are actually hearing is the neural consequence of hearing loss. So I'm clear. I'm not saying every form of tinnitus is the result of hearing loss, but it's estimated that over 90% of people with tinnitus have associated hearing loss, okay? If you really wanna know, the other 10% are most often associated with some sort of a dental or mandibular issue, perhaps even intracranial pressure. Oh, and if you look at the numbers, there are 50 million people in the United States that report tinnitus. If that number sounds familiar, it probably should. There are 50 million Americans that also suffer with hearing loss. You do the math, okay? I don't think it's a coincidence. So given that tinnitus is actually the neural consequence of hearing loss, you would think that everybody with tinnitus has a significant hearing loss. Not necessarily, see, the problem is there is significant, although not exactly known, but there are a lot of people with quote unquote normal hearing that have tinnitus. But, but we can't forget, research tells us that a loss of 50% of neural connections from ear to brain can be found in people with normal hearing. Pretty crazy, huh? So even when somebody says they don't realize that their hearing is being affected, that doesn't mean that the nerves from ear to brain are not breaking down. See, when the nerves are compromised from ear to brain, ringing can result. Just like when the nerves are compromised from arm to brain, a person gets a false sensation or pain that they perceive in their arm or leg, right? Going back to that analogy. So let's focus on the medical treatment of hearing loss and how we need to approach this problem. As usual, let's start with why. Why do we treat tinnitus? Well, there's no cure. However, there are plenty of major health conditions that do not have a cure, but they have very effective treatment rates, just like treating tinnitus. See, today's treatment, when set correctly, can reduce ringing in 70 to 80% of patients. Now, how long that takes to achieve these results, that can vary. And it is very important to lay out that this is not a quick fix. In fact, studies show that changes and adaptations in the brain can be quick, like minutes. We've all had patients say in the office, wow, the ringing's gone as soon as you start treatment. But it can also take months, maybe a year or longer. Being upfront is really important, and most important, regardless of how long it takes. It is the most effective treatment because the alternative is doing nothing. That is not acceptable. See, we all need to understand that hearing loss is a progressive and degenerative disorder. And if left untreated, it can lead to all sorts of problems. Dementia, stress, anxiety, hospitalization, increased risk of falls, and even premature death. So it's really important to start treatment early. 
Okay, next is the how. How do we treat tinnitus? Well, when it comes to treating tinnitus, the goal is to provide that auditory biological feedback that the brain needs. With this stimulation, you encourage neuroplasticity. And when dealing with hearing loss, you know, there's a major loss of neural connections. And through treatment, the goal is to target the remaining nerves so that you can maintain the quality and the vitality of the system. Otherwise, they're next in line to go. The brain will need time to adapt to the stimulation in order for the patients to experience a reduction in his or her tinnitus. Finally, now, what do we do? With our patented neurotechnology process, we are able to treat each patient individually, right? It's a custom treatment plan that's laid out for all, for each patient, depending on their individual hearing loss and cognitive needs. See, there's both qualitative and quantitative assessments and techniques that are required to measure the success of treating tinnitus. And these are all part of the neurotechnology process. And we have nearly an 80% effective treatment rate with this process. Remember, with targeted stimulation and accompanying cognitive behavioral techniques, we can help to drive down that ringing for all of our patients, therefore helping everyone to live their best life. Thank you and take care.